Yeah, if you don't remember, I, I mentioned it only briefly in like one video or in like the description of a couple other videos, but no one reads the descriptions. Yeah, I had a surgery in my mouth, so uh, that's why the videos have been lacking lately. And uh, I am I just got the stitches out today, and I'm starting to feel like I can talk normally again. This is the Spruce Moose by Monev44. All the planes that I'm going to take a look at today are by Monev44. So this plane... The whole concept for it is that, wow, that's cool, is that it is has onboard refinery and refueling capabilities on board. I already said on board. Anyhow, this, yes, let's go ahead and close that. I don't like that it clips into landing gear. Ah, and then the engine is clipped into that slightly. Ah, sorry, I always get annoyed by those. I mean, look, it's just, it's just, that's not how physics do. Watch, watch, open, 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 come on quicker God. yeah sorry people people will complain about me complaining about that but it's like come on it's just you could have just put the landing gear a little to the side and the engine a little to the side monev i love you but you know that's that ugh. okay that was slightly awkward anyhow let's move on to the next thing oh these are clipped in here too although that might have been unavoidable i don't know i think that could have been avoided Let's ignore it and move on with the review. So this plane is, like I said, it's an attempt to make a plane that can go land somewhere and refuel itself anywhere. As long as, of course, you land there and there's something to mine there. Because if there... Ha! Ha! Ah, center of lift indicator. What are you doing? So yeah, I completely forgot what I was saying. Let's go ahead and launch it. Alright, so here we are on the runway. I'm going to go ahead and put up the... Oh! It didn't work. Oh, I hit the wrong button. That's why it didn't work. I was going to say, I'm going to put up all the landing gear and landing legs. There you go. Now it's working. That's weird. It didn't work again. And I did hit the correct button the second time. The, the second time. Anyhow, let's go ahead and take off with this. Oh, it has air brakes. Nice. It's a nice touch. Oh, yeah, it has flaps. It has flaps? Oh, yeah, I can't. I still slightly can't speak straight. Oh, those are kind of weirdly placed. Oh, well. We are off the ground, so that's good. Does this have any kind of scanner on board? Because if it doesn't, then, um, does it, hold on, I'll have to check in the cargo bay. Because if it doesn't have a scanner, then I don't know how I would be able to figure out where something, wow, that's a, uh... camera, what are you, eh, this looks like as good a place as any to land, so we'll now pull up into the ground. That's how you land, right? That's how I was taught to land. Nah, I'm just kidding, of course. Let's uh, pull back the throttle, activate the brakes, activate the flaps. So now you can see we're going rather slow. And I'm going to put the landing gear down. And uh, what is that? There's like a little thing next to the tree there. We're going to try and land on it. Not land on it, but we're going to come near to it so I can see what it is better. What is that? Start it. No? Huh? I guess there's ore here. I wonder if this... I, I forget how the ore system works. I, I, I only very briefly looked into it. Is it that there's ore everywhere, but it's in different concentrations, and some places have very, very little, so it's not as good to mine there? Or is it anywhere? I don't remember. So this is our primary fuel system. Oh yes, there is also... He mentioned this. There's, there's a fuel cell up there, so you can harvest and mine and... Harvest and mine? Harvest and convert fuel from ore at night. Okay, so we got, got a bunch of ore tanks here. I'm guessing, yep, those are what we're filling up right now. And then we have, of course, the converter, which will convert it to liquid fuel and oxidizer, or monoprop, or liquid fuel. Awesome. And uh, the engines are still on, sucking up. Oh, but they're, they're, like, they're still making noise, but they're not actually doing anything. Okay. Or they are, but it's not enough to register. All right, everything looks good. <laughs> I like the way this looks. Just kind of funny. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start this up. Make uh, some liquid fuel. And how do I see? Does it? Ah, oh, there you go. I can see in the resource usage. So the ore is going down rapidly, and we're starting to refuel a little bit. Yes. 
and now we're going to review refuel very slowly because now it's processing and mining at the same rate and let's go ahead and stop that and then we'll time warp a bunch oh we're already at maximum but I wasn't paying attention because I'm a bit of adult alright let's go ahead and start processing into liquid fuel let's go ahead and stop this and retract it and we'll go ahead and close the bay retract landing gear I mean uh, ladders and rear landing gear then we'll go ahead and uh, what's the term what's it's two to retract the solar panels then we'll uh, turn off the brakes activate SAS full throttle we want our yes surface speed now we can very carefully take off mm. Oh, there you go. And now we can continue about our business with a full load of ore being slowly processed into liquid fuel. Very nice. Yes, this plane can go anywhere. Do anything. Clip into itself slightly. Why is that doing that? Now I guess these uh these ore tanks are right up there on the edge, so when you maneuver slightly, they can clip through. Huh. Weird. Let's pull up the flap. And we want to gain altitude because this thing can probably fly better at higher altitude. And now since we're already flying at a high altitude and a high speed over the mountains, well not quite over the mountains just yet, but we're flying towards the mountains, I've decided to do something horribly stupid, and that is to land on the mountains. Because, you know, that'll totally go well with, you know, the thinner atmosphere and higher airspeed required to stay airborne and the mountainous terrain hence you know the mountains it shall be interesting that much is for certain right now I'm trying to decide between three potential landing sites one is right there one is across the top of there and the other is across there now this one makes the most sense this one would be most difficult that one I think would be interesting because you you would be flying you you'd want to go low and then fly up and land on the side of it going up and of course there's this spire directly in front of us which I've tried to land on many times before and have succeeded a couple of times and is crazy difficult we're actually starting to uh, be unable to maintain flight time to see if the flaps actually increase lift they do nice of course our airspeed is reduced even further so let me uh Actually, I think we're doing alright with our engines at... Oops, let me put them back up to there. Hmm, we're definitely not able to pull up anymore. Let's go ahead and throttle up. Quickly, quickly. Before we start to lose it. Okay, let's not do the flaps, because that did not help. Actually, we're still not able to pull up very well. Let's full throttle it. Alright. Uh... Landing gear down. We're going to kind of just crest over. I think we're going for the easier landing site, it looks like, because of how impossible it just got momentarily. Alright, uh, let's see. Let's see what it looks like after we go over this edge. Let's go ahead and uh, cut the engines down again. Cut the engines down. Hold on. Pulling to the uh, left quite a bit trying to curve it around. Alright, let's go ahead and see if we can keep the airspeed up a bit by pulling down. And right about now we're gonna want to activate the brakes. Which is gonna slow us down. And now we want to... Whoa, 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 whoa! I lost control momentarily there. Alright, now we're gonna wanna... We're going to want to have it not have a structural failure at high speeds right when we touch down. But it's uh, a little late for that now. Yeah. Be, be careful when you land. <laughs> Next up we're going to take a look at a glider. This is... oh. You know what? Heh. They changed the parts. This is made in .90. Really? They got rid of the straight wing and replaced it with this? Remember those long straight wings we had? They replaced them with this. Actually, that makes sense considering they have pieces that are essentially straighter wings. That's a control surface, but you know, you get my point. So this doesn't look right anymore. Eh, it also relied on Infiniglide. 
so I think I will forget about it in favor of a new better glider at some point. Let's go ahead and give it a fly, even though it clearly is not ready. Alright, full throttle, fire up the engines, test the control surfaces, be very happy about the design. I mean, other than the fact that the parts changed, so it's a bit wrong. I do like this design. Let's turn off the SAS. It pulls up slightly on its own. That's not always a good sign. And in fact, it's usually not a good sign. But this thing flies... I think this flies pretty well. It's not the most maneuverable thing, but it is fairly stable. It is fairly stable while remaining, fuck, maneuverable. You know, as long as you don't have an idiot flying it. You know, like, like, like me. Oh, we're inside the VAB. Whoa, that went weird for a moment. Yes. There we go. One more explosion. Let's give it one more time. Like I said, it's uh, fairly maneuverable. Oh, 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 oh. Can we take off before we hit those? Yes, yes, we can actually. Quite easily, in fact. It's a bit maneuverable and very, very stable as long as you don't have an idiot flying it. I already said that. But I did the same stupidness again. I think I'm just going to leave it there. And last up, this was also made in .90, but still looks pretty good, because it's mostly using the newer parts that weren't changed. It is supposed to be a VTOL. It is called the Gunter VTOL. Oh, 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 oh! It has the engines inside there. That's so cool. Very cool. It might also slightly not work because of changes in parts, but if it doesn't... Oh well, no. If it, if it doesn't, oh well, I'll just fly it around the normal way. Very interesting. Yes, so basically it's designed to be a long distance close reconnaissance plane because it's a VTOL and apparently carries enough fuel to circumnavigate Kerbin. And it also apparently has fuel lines placed strategically to allow even fuel flow to where no matter how long you spend in VTOL or normal flight, it will maintain balance. Also, ow, ow, tooth. And the looks, if you couldn't tell, was inspired by the Blackbird from the 90s X-Men cartoons. Though clearly, it is not an SR-71, it is similar in some design aspects. The sky is black, the sky has been removed, the sky- No, really, it is. Wow, it actually loaded like this. Haha, <laughs> that is a weird glitch. Well, I guess we're gonna get to see- uh, we're gonna need to explore Kerbin with a black sky with this. That is very strange. I have to take screenshots of this. Wait, no, without the mouse. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and reset the camera. And, uh, okay, so apparently I can hit, what is it, four? Yes, four to open the cargo bays and activate the vertical engines. Except it seems the uh, vertical engines did not activate. Yeah, that's just opening the cargo bays. Well, hopefully those are the correct engines activating. It looks like they are. Let's go ahead and activate RCS and Stability Assist. Watch the beautiful smoke fly out around us. And... And... You know, maybe at some point lift off. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. So it looks like it may not be able to actually be tall due to ow changes in parts. Ow! I actually bit on the tooth that I had the surgery with. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, deactivate the brakes and hit K to thrust up with the RCS, and I'm gonna hit space again to activate other engines. And we're gonna basically do a short takeoff with this instead of a vertical takeoff. There you go. Since it gets into the air much quicker than it would have if it didn't have those. And now for the uh, fun and tricky part, where I accidentally hit the wrong button, and then try to disable these as I close the bays around them. Okay, that's the, that one closed. Now I need to close the other one. Come on, give me access. And... There we go. So now we're just flying on the three engines at the back. And uh, this thing looks like it would shit itself if you pulled up too hard, so let's go ahead and test that. Ah, it handles it quite well. Good. Good. It better. Let's uh, take a look at our resource usage. And let's go ahead and point it straight up. 
and I want to basically fly this thing really high up because we don't have a sky and I want to see what that looks like. yeah there's no sky on the map either this thing flies quite well I like it it survived the transition pretty well I mean other than some parts being changed and things looking ever so slightly off. well this is the only part that I think looks ever so slightly off is this I don't know about the rest of it actually those are supposed to be there I'm looking at the image of it those are well they're supposed to look a bit different than they do but they are supposed to be there and otherwise it looks mostly the same so I think it survived the transition quite well on the fact that apparently the uh, vertical takeoff engines don't have enough power to take off now I'm guessing it's because it, it's using those basic jet engines and I believe they cut down how much thrust they actually can produce so yes now we're up much higher looking at the no sky but that's about all for this episode thanks for watching as always See you in space. I'm flying sideways. This thing doesn't have a vertical stabilizer. Oh yeah, it does. It has multiple in down here. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye.